Hi, I'm Matthew Francis. Welcome to Diversity Dignified. Today I have a guest with me, Tom Hendow. Uh, he's from Portland, Maine. And I actually know Tom as a friend and as a colleague. He's someone who identifies as a cisgendered bisexual male. Although Tom has a real problem with labels, we'll be going into that a little bit. Uh, cisgendered is someone who um, w identifies uh, the gender they were assigned at birth that is congruent with how they feel about themselves. Uh, and Tom feels a, a male, very masculine male. And bisexual means that he has uh, sexual fluidity with the people he is interested in. So Tom, thank you for the show. Thank you for being here. Huh? It's uh, very interesting to be on the side of the camera. Be on the side of the camera. So in because I do know you pretty well, and I've, um, I was always intrigued. I want to start off with sort of how in your childhood you, you engaged in some of your play. That, in, that interested me. You told me that you engaged in a lot of non-traditional play, meaning that you were, um, you were playing ho with housekeeping and cooking and playing house and, and that sort of thing. Would you mind go getting into that? Yeah, right. Um, well, uh, it, it was really uh, something that came up a lot later on when my parents showed eight, mil showed eight millimeter movies of me as a preschooler because uh, uh, I used to ask for dolls and, um, you know, uh, ranges and refrigerators, the things that you play house with mm -hmm. um, before I went to school. Um, in my neighborhood, and I grew up in New Jersey, and, you know, uh, the houses are a lot closer together, like maybe like downtown Portsmouth a little bit, but um, uh, the <clears throat> my, uh, my friends that lived right nearby were all girls and they always wanted to play house. So I guess, and it's, it's really hard for me to remember what happened because I don't, I'm not sure if it's what I remember or what I saw on the 8mm oh, films okay. and what my parents talked about, but um, uh, they always, I, you know, I was the only boy among a bunch of girls, so I was always the dad and we would play house and that's what I was interested in. And then when I went to, started going to school, kindergarten and that sort of thing, and uh, you know, I'd walk to school to St. Cecilia's and I met um, uh, friends who were boys that were my own age that lived further up the block and I was expanded my universe and I started to ask for different things and then I thought I would be a fireman and uh, I know uh, um, a cowboy was one of the things I wanted to be. So I'd ask for toys that were like that. Okay. But I know you were interested in that. And it was really, um, it actually, I think I shared with you later on when I was a junior in, in, in junior high school. And um, I was on the Little League football team. And I, I like football because it didn't require as much um, agility to be on the line or, you know, okay. have that sort of kind of a position, not, not, not throwing or anything. I always kind of, that's another thing that would be, I guess, non is that I never felt like um, athletically coordinated. And, um, and so I was really enjoyed football because I didn't have to be. And uh, the coach, one of the coaches, the, uh, the youngest coach, was uh, delivered pizzas and was delivering pizzas to the people who lived upstairs. And my parents asked him to come into the house while we were having dinner. And, um, and because they wanted to talk to him while we were eating dinner. And, and they said to him, you know, we're really grateful to you for having our son get, get so excited and involved in football because when he was a little kid, he used to play with girls' toys and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, of course, in junior high school, I just wanted to fall, fall through the floor. I, I was like, what are you doing? You know, um, and that's, I think that's more, like, I, I never, and I guess I never realized. I mean, I just always thought, okay, you know, there were being progressive parents. They were going along with whatever I wanted. It's okay. You know, when I, when I started, you know, when I started in school, I started to ask. I remember I asked for an engineering set because I thought, I, I thought of, uh, I wanted to be a train engineer. So I thought that meant getting trains and stuff. And they got me these construction toys, which were fine. I played with them and I liked them, but they weren't what I wanted. But, but that was a different type of toy than what I played with before. And I knew there was a difference. And they used to show those things. And people used to laugh when they saw me pushing the doll carriage in the 8 millimeter movie and I got a little red face but I thought okay you know that's just all right but when they did that in front of my football coach I was like oh so that's a problem for them all along was it you know so that was a little so, took me back were, a little bit. when you were playing in the non-traditional play with the this was really then it wasn't that it was your preference this was just to have friends this was because I thought when we were talking in the past that you had been I would say it was my preference. I, I would say that I enjoyed it. I, I, I didn't like, oh, I'm getting this because I have to. I didn't 
see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I was doing at the time, I suppose. I, I don't remember having any negative feelings about it at all. I never thought, you know. And so going into football was something you wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, and there was a lot in between. Okay. I mean, you know, I, I think that, that, that my preference for toys, uh, if you really want to get into that, was um, I remember there was, a, uh, there was this play set. It was, it was like a town. And all the things, the cars and the people in the town had little magnets under it. And you had magnetic, magnetic wands, and you would push them along them. This thing, a lot of like the opening of Mr. Rogers or what. I loved that toy. There was another thing called Showboat. Um, uh, that, that which was, uh, you know, it was a showboat. It was, it was a thing with a stage, and I always liked theater. I still do. I'm involved in theater. And, and you would have these little characters that would play on it, you know. Um, those weren't typical things that other guys had. Um, and I remember having, um, you know, like uh, the gray and the blue uh, soldiers for the Civil War, and they would be all kinds of things. I mean, they would be soldiers. They would be families. They would be anything. I would make up stories and use them. So I think it was... Um, uh, I, I was. I, I think a lot of my toys were non-gender specific necessarily. Um, I, yeah, I, 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 it, it, you, it, it depends on the, what, what period of my life it was and that sort of thing. But um, so when you went into football, some things that you had told me that you had been bullied. I thought you had been bullied and and called names, fag. Well, I, you're you're saying football, but um, actually it was uh, like little league. Uh, basketball and baseball I wasn't very good at okay. and I experienced you know I experienced a lot of things that I thought you know that, that kept me away from it you know and um, my brother it was just the two of us my brother was a, you know like uh, two months two, two years older and uh, <clears throat> he um, he seemed to excel to me at sports and I didn't so I shied away from them and when it came time to choose sides for a team or something I usually was chosen last and my my brother was uh, overweight and I was very skinny I was very underweight so I felt kinda awkward about that um, but then later on in life my my brother said to me I think we might have been in high school or college he said you know you know when I was trying to you know starting with sports when I was little, you know, trying to get into Little League or football, you know, or basketball or whatever. Um, the guys called each other faggot or whatever they were messing up. That was just the thing that they did, mm -hmm. at least in New Jersey. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. And so, like, uh, I guess I was just more sensitive than he was, and that made me pull away rather than, okay, I'll show them, I'll keep on trying, and I'll be better, you know. I didn't really see any need for it. I'm not really that much of a competitive person anyway, so it wasn't in me to be... Well, I shouldn't say I'm not that much of a competitor, but there's some things I am competitive about <laughs> when I'm driving, I am. But, but, um, but in terms of sports, I mean, and that would be one thing that, you know, when you call cis, whatever it is, I don't fall Yeah, maybe we'll go back to this. So for a lot of folks with gender, that seems to be sort of identified around three or four. Most people do. Um, I'm interested then, since you're, we're going to focus more on your sexuality, can you tell me when you felt that you were maybe fluid about that? Um, I actually, uh, <clears throat> this is maybe a little bit, um, I, I really didn't think about it that much. I mean, I, I, I always had thoughts, but I mean, I uh, when I was going, getting into puberty, and um, it was a decisive moment for me where um, uh, I woke up from a dream, mm -hmm. and the dream uh, resulted in something that <laughs> made me say, oh, I was sexually aroused, mm -hmm. and it involved... Um, a woman uh, dancing in a genie costume, sitting on a pillow, and I remember the feeling in the dream, but it was the, um, a man coming into it, in addition, that, um, made me, uh, that made me wake up and realize what was happening to me at the time. It was the first time for me to have, a, I guess, some kind of a sexual experience, and I was asleep. And um, I went to school that day. I wasn't really sure what I had done. I, I really couldn't figure it out because I didn't, I was, I just didn't know what, what had happened, but I was starting to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I thought, oh, wow, I'm attracted to both sexes. That's, that's when, and then looking back at my childhood and the things that, that happened before that, um, you know, that, that was, it was pretty, then I, then things added up. But um, okay. up until that point, I wasn't really thinking about w how I felt about different people as, as a, About what? how old were you? When I, that happened, um, I think I was 13. Okay. So what did that, I mean, bring up for feelings? I mean, at 13, back then? 
Yeah, 13 back then. Um, well, I was scared. I was very scared. Um, I knew that um, any, you, you know, it, when, when I, uh, in my culture in the, among guys then and as I got older and people were talking, guys were talking more about sex, you could be totally interested in women or the opposite sex, but if you had one little interest or any kind of thing, uh, in, in a guy, then you were just like totally gay and all of that. And um, I was. Uh, it wasn't the language for being bisexual back no, then. No, 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 none at all. And I was like, and then plus everything else that was kind of adding up, you know, my, my parents, the 13, that was about that time. I, I had just been in junior high school and I was adding up the, you know, the, I guess I was, I was in high school when that happened. Um, that's kind of young, but I, I mean old, but I, I the, so all of the stuff that happened before that point made me go, oh my God, you know, am I gay? I, that's weird because there are so many, um, my, one of my friends, uh, ha his father had a garage up the street and we used to go in the back room and there were naked pictures of naked women all over and I remember getting aroused by that. So I thought, but maybe that doesn't count or I don't know because, but, but I went with it. I went with society. I mean, I was, I, I, I knew that that, I mean, that, that was just, uh, I, I never, I don't think I ever called myself straight, you know, I never, but, you know, um, but I think that uh, what was going on with me was that I uh, thought, okay, whatever, let's just see what happens, I suppose. So you didn't have anyone to talk to about these oh, conflicting no. Oh, no, oh, no, no, not okay. at all, no. No, and my father was very, very, very concerned, and my father was a very um, liberal type of a guy, but he was still very concerned about um, my lack of interest in competitive sports. Um, and I had a lot of interest in other kinds of sports like skiing. I was just really interested in skiing. Uh, I was really interested in swimming and I would have joined the swim team, but there was a little kerfuffle when I first joined the team with the coach and so I went into wrestling instead. And, and the coach from the wrestling team was a, was, was a nice guy, so I stuck with it even though I probably would have been better off just going to swim. But anyway, um, that, that, you know, things like that, um, like, uh, you know, preyed on my mind a little bit about uh, not fulfilling what my father uh, wanted me to, I mean, he was, he was desperate. He used to take me out to tennis courts and, you know, say, maybe this is your sport, maybe this is your sport, you know, all over the place. And but what exactly was he afraid of, that you were going to be gay? I think so. I mean, I never said, no, don't be gay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 he would never say that. He was too um, open-minded to do something like that. And my father was very, um, oh, you know, he was, uh, you know, my mother is very physically affectionate, uh, but my father's German. He was a little bit more reserved, but always uh, made a point to say, you know, he loved us no matter what and all that sort of stuff. But it never came up like uh, a thing that they said overtly. And, um, but so it was other messages, I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, like when I was going out on a date um, and, and there was a distinct difference between me and my brother, um, mm -hmm. you know, they worried about him. I was, I, was a pretty, I was a pretty good boy, you know what I mean? I did try to do everything right and, you know, uh, didn't go out and stay out late at night. And uh, I remember I was going out on a date um, and my mother said, uh, and they were, they were sitting at, they're so often sitting at the kitchen table. <laughs> I don't know, I was guess the way our apartment was laid out. And she said, don't do anything I wouldn't do, or if you do, have protection. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I wasn't even thinking in, in those terms. But they, but I mean, um, I could see now that they were worried. Yeah, okay. they were worried that, yeah, like, oh, I hope he does something I wouldn't do sort of thing. Okay. You know, so it was, it, there, was, it, there was that, you know, and... Um, so what did you do about these emerging feelings? They come out, you're, they come out at 13, you, you're hearing the messages, not subtle, sounds like subtle messages. Uh, um, what, what happens more in high school when you start having more feelings? What do you do with them? Well, I deal with them in private. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't go into detail about that, but I mean, I think most people do. I mean, they, they, they deal with it. Um, I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, date anyone but women or girls, you know, uh, of my own age and oh. that sort of thing, as in high school, went to my prom and all that sort of thing. I had, I had um, friends that were both uh, boys and girls. Um, one of my best friends for a while was, was Cindy King. I was, Oops, I don't know. I shouldn't run this aside. But but I remember being very very close with her, and, and we 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 got almost got to the point where we might have gone out. I'm I'm not sure, but um, but then um, 
I, I just didn't, I, I, especially where I grew up in Kearney, um, uh, I didn't really feel comfortable being um, th with the social group that there was, you know what I mean? With that, that uh, there, was, there was expectations I didn't understand, I was very sensitive, I, I used to blame other people, but now I could see it was just a function of my own personality at the time that I was really just better, I, I felt more comfortable um, uh, you know, hanging out by myself or with uh, just a couple of other friends or going out with a group of people. I didn't really feel, uh, I felt like it was like, a <laughs> it was an insurmountable thing to, uh, you know, to, uh, at that age, I, I did, I did want to have sex, but I, I didn't know how to uh, approach a woman for it or, or felt like it was um, right to, you know, I was, uh, had been practicing Catholic all my life and thought, you know, I'm doing the right thing, I'm doing the good thing, and all that sort of stuff, although secretly I would have, would have welcomed the opportunity to try, and, and that didn't happen until I got into college. Can you talk more about that? Are you, college? Yes. Well. Because that's, that's you're, you're getting away from your family now, you're hearing more different messages. Right. You had gone to a progressive school, Colby? Col Colby? Yeah. I, a progressive? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about progressive, but it was, uh, you know, liberal arts college. Um, and um, I, I quickly, yeah, I quickly lost my virginity, if I can mm -hmm. say that, um, mm -hmm. there. And I, I had a lot of friends, uh, a lot of friends at Colby. It, it, I was much more um, socially, uh, I became more of a social person at, at college. Mm -hmm. And I had no trouble getting to know women and, and, and having sex was, didn't seem to be a problem. And, it seemed and to what be, about with men as well? Or? No, 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 no not, nothing with men, but um, I, I did, I was, uh, I, I was attracted to one of my friends, you know, one of my really close friends, and I didn't really suspect for a minute that, um, you know, that he, he was uh, inclined that way at all, so it never came up. It just never came up. I just stayed away from it. And I had been, you know, propositioned by guys, but I wasn't, uh, I just didn't happen to be attracted to them. And but were you feeling like, okay, so you weren't attracted to the guys that were interested in you, but were you, were your feelings for men at all formulating more strongly, or, I mean, were you wanting to check out that part of yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, it just didn't, I didn't, again, I didn't know how to approach it, um, uh, you know, and it was scary. It seemed dangerous. Uh, it just, like, for all the other reasons. And then also, um, there was the issue of how, how, how about the other part of me? How about... If, you know, I'm still coming from a mindset or from a, the thinking that, you know, if you're just a little bit gay, you're all gay, you know, and then, then that would eliminate my interest in women, you know. Oh, so, okay. So, it would, so it, you were coming from this either or, con you could either, you had to be either heterosexual or you had to be gay. Yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. And, and I definitely, I, I, you know, I, I actually uh, wrote this down in my um, wife, I wound up reading it later on, and my ex-wife were on that. The reason, the only reason why I married my wife and got together with my wife is because I, I, I loved her. I, 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 she was somebody that I loved and that I was attracted to, and um, I would, and I said in this thing that I wrote to my kids, I don't know if they ever read it, that, you know, if I had met a man that I fell in love with at that time, I would have done the same. I would have considered myself gay, and then that would have been it. But when I met Andrea, and I thought, and I believe, and I, be, I was very interested in monogamy, um, that, that that would be it. And then mm -hmm. that's it. I was happy. I was satisfied. And it was, um, you know, when, when, we, when we met in college, we were just friends. Mm -hmm. And we stayed in touch after college, and we didn't um, actually become, start dating and, and, and having a sexual relationship until a couple of years after I graduated college. And then pretty soon after that, we were married. So how did you reconcile that you weren't either or? At what point did you recognize that you were bisexual? I, I, it goes right back to that dream that I had when I was 13. That's when I recognized I was bisexual. Whether or not I needed to act on it or, or pronounce it to the world, you know, that was my business up mm. until I felt a little frustrated, which was quite a few years later. It wasn't in 2000, until 2011, right. and, you know, I graduated high school. And, <laughs> no, uh, 1975, so there's my age. But, um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, the, the, you know, I, I think I shared with you, and it's, it's okay to say it. I, I just assumed that when people got married, they got married so they could have sex all the time. And 
uh, it's, this is okay for me to say, right? Sure. I mean, you know. Yes. Um, and so, and, and, my, and, and my wife was very, um, I guess, obliging or interested, whatever you want to call it. So we, you know, we, it, was, it was a very satisfying marriage. And for me, in terms of sex, it was at least once a day, if not twice, for over 25 years. Um, and um, I found out much later that that's not the way other people who get married live. Um, and I, but I was satisfied, and I, w and I was totally faithful, I was totally monogamous, and if there were little blips of, you know, and I, I remember that there was, um, I, I was, uh, for most of my career since I was 29, I, I have been an executive director, so I, I, I've had people working for me. I remember I went to a party and one of my employees, uh, she came on to me while we were dancing, and then, you know, I just put that off. Um, and there, you know, there were instances like that. I just didn't. I was not going to. Uh, I just wasn't interested. I, I, I mean, I was happy. I was very, very happily married. I, I, I liked my whole situation in life. So I. Um, but in 2011, you came out as bisexual. So what would be what cat, what catapulted that? Well, yeah, that's that's uh, a that, that, what what catapulted that was actually the fact that um, there were a couple of times. Um, where somebody I had known, a friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, uh, was, uh, it seemed to me th that I actually now, a guy that I was interested in or f felt attracted to, um, was, um, I thought was, was interested in me. And I, um, we were in a couple of situations where that something could have happened and I just couldn't let it happen because I was married and, and, and it wasn't overt. It wasn't overt. I, I was sensing it, but I didn't. I, I know the conversation was leading in that direction, and I pushed it away on purpose um, because, again, you know, I just was very sold and committed, and, and I love my wife. I still do, and um, so uh, I was. Uh, that that was happening, and at the same time, I was feeling some frustration. This is going to make people really not like me, but um, because because. Uh, it was becoming uh, for Andrea less frequent. Um, we maybe only three or four times a week, mm -hmm. and that was different for me. I know that that is that's a lot still for some people, but for me it was different, and things were changing, and I didn't quite understand it. I mean, I was you know it was uh, during uh, you know whatever that period when you reach middle age that we go through, and um, so I uh, I was I was in, in a in a quandary about what to do, and I thought you know I I the one person I could I've always been able to talk to was Andrea, so I thought um, and and I had actually I had two years before this started to see a therapist because of the infrequency of um, of sex was making me. Uh, angry and and I had other anger issues and I felt like this is my problem not hers I need to see somebody and I started doing that so I tested out saying or identifying as bisexual to my therapist and then when the world didn't end I I, um, I, 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 I sat down and talked to Andrea about it but I guess I'm confused listening to you right now is this about the frequency of sex or who you were attracted to both I mean, you, you, you okay. asked me what the impetus was for me to, right. to do this. And being satisfied just, just eliminated the need to, to explore anymore with anybody. Okay, and so uh, if she so hadn't been, if she was uh, interested in having sex every day as she had been, would you have felt the need then to be bisexual? It's, it's hard to say because I never had the opportunity like I was having in this, in, with this other person. Um, so maybe that might have influenced it too. You know, so okay. though I think though, I was just saying those two things combined uh, kind of, I think, motivated me. And there were a lot of other things going on, too. What about the energy, the masculine energy, the connection with the, with the masculine? Andrea is very feminine. I've met her. So were you missing that? Is that part of it? You wanting to con a connection with the masculine energy? Um, well, that's, that, that's always, was always part of it. It wasn't like it, I suddenly wanted to do that. That was, mm -hmm. that was part of it. But um, I, I, uh, I think more than anything is that, yeah, there were lots of, there were points in my life where I wondered, you know, right through, will I ever know what it's like? Because I never, had never experienced it. And I uh, certainly felt like w with my period in college and afterward before I married Andrea that I had really, you know, was satisfied with um, you know knowing 
what it was like to have different relationships with women, and so that was that, you know. Um, but I really hadn't uh, uh, at all experienced it. So I wondered, you know what I mean? It was a big question mark. I wanted mm -hmm. to find out what it was like, and um, I wasn't willing to go as far as to do it um, in a clandestine or, you know, in a way that was, um, was uh, you know, like behind by, by lying or cheating or going around. In no, you, t you were straightforward with her. Right. I figured, I figured we could talk about it and I could have somebody to talk about it with. Mm -hmm. I didn't expect her to have the response that she did. Um, and so I didn't figure that it, not anything would come of it than having somebody to talk to. Okay. So since then, you've been with men. How does that feel? Does that feel all right with you? I mean, I don't even know where I'm going anymore. Yeah, you're flash forwarding a lot. Yeah. Because um, uh, I think, you know, you might, you probably already know, but we haven't said it yet, that it, Andrea said after, after we talked about it for a couple of weeks, and she was very, very open and very interested about it. She wasn't negative about it at all. She was, you know, wanting to talk about it, that she said it was okay for me to explore. Okay. And that was like, whoa, really? I mean, wow, you know, mm -hmm. to the point where I could go to this friend and say, is this what's been happening? And he said, yeah. And he said, mm -hmm. well, do you want to, you know, whatever. And we, we, we went from there. But um, uh, it gave me the opportunity for a period of time in my marriage to, to see what that was like. Uh -huh. And where are you at now with it, with being bisexual? <laughs> well, you're flashing forward a lot. But anyway, um, yeah, we, we uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm divorced now. Mm -hmm. And the person that I see the most, uh, as you know, is, is my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I've gone through a lot since then. And, um, you know, I, I, really, uh, I really am learning a lot more uh, about in the last few years about the law of attraction, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, being, and a lot of it has to do with being, you know, uh, being true to yourself and having the kind of energy that, you know, you want, you know, and sometimes I think what happens to us a lot is that our true nature um, is uh, not even revealed to us because we can't, we, we have these uh, temptations, these interests and that are that are in us for some reason, either by genetics or by experience or whatever, and we're and, and so we're hemmed in by society into a f few set of rules, and I, you know, just like you're flashing forward from 2011 to 2018, what happened in the interim was a, a real, um, a real. Uh, was, is the biggest part of what, what's, what, what's, what, what's been happened to me is really discovering myself and really discovering that, you know, you can think that you are interested in certain things. You can think that they're really more important than anything else. But if you always keep them at a distance and resist them, they're always, they're, you're never going to know. And when you do follow through with things, you learn more about yourself and you find that they're not as, all as important as you thought they were mm -hmm. or what is really important or really who you are. You know, and and uh, just to, just to, to clarify, um, eventually, you know, after uh, after a few months of my exploration, um, Andrea, I, I, I was done. I was done. I was like, okay, you know, I've figured this out. I'm happy being married. I'm happy this way. You know, whatever. And then about a month later, uh, she asked for a separation because she said she really wasn't good with it. She didn't know herself mm -hmm. well enough to say that, you Pump know, what the feelings would bring really up for her. she thought she would be okay with my exploring and now in retrospect she isn't and she needed time alone and I was devastated. I just never thought that that would happen. I, I, I was, I thought my being honest without, you know, just being open about it would be preemptive. I would do whatever, but um, I didn't, I actually had had enough counseling not to be angry about it, to try to be understanding. And I moved out, and and um, I was subsequently rejected by my entire extended family. That you know, she not only on one of the day that she told me she wanted the separation, she also told me she had outed me to our entire family. So um, I I, I <laughs> saying all this stuff, but uh, it, it was uh, it was cataclysmic for me. I, I moved out on my own and lived by myself for the first time, and I felt like I had no one in my life anymore. Where I had been, you know, well over 50 years. I had lived with the idea that I was totally surrounded by love, by all these people who now just totally rejected me. So I was pretty devastating. Yeah, I was. I was at the end of my rope. You know, I, I really needed to. I, I, I identified that I had to pick myself up or do something, in order to uh, you know turn the whole situation 
well, to survive, uh -huh. basically, not to, to, to just really quit uh, on life. So, um, so that, that um, made me do a lot of crazy things that, you know, um, that, uh, you know, helped me eventually learn a lot of things. And uh -huh. It took me through a lot of things. So, so I, I, it's, a, no, it's not an easy answer to just say, well, am I right now? Where I am right now is that um, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more, uh, trying to become more and more aware of what makes me happy. Uh, to, to be more aware of the things that, that really uh, I can move toward and that, that on a daily basis, um, one of the things that, but, you know, w I have to say that back then in the beginning, the things that really helped me out is that I, um, first time I was, I was in my own apartment on a Sunday, I went to a, a Buddhist center at 8.30 in the morning, the Unitarian Church at 10 o'clock, and then Catholic Mass at noon. I was really looking for some answers, obviously. But I did, I did settle into, into Buddhism, and um, it, it, the meditation um, really has like, opened my eyes a lot more to you know, uh, myself, myself. Have you found any, um, in, the com in the community, the LGBT plus community, have you found any kind of support there? I sometimes feel the LGBT community can be split a little bit. A little bit, huh? Being bisexual <laughs> is kind of a, a difficult position to be in. I think that I think um, gay men in particular don't believe in bisexuality more than heterosexuals do, but uh, and I don't quite understand it. I mean, I mean, I, I know gay men who who as gay men have had sex with women. So, I, I and it always has been uh, kind of um, even being a little kid, it was always kind of. Uh, um, a, a mystery to me how people couldn't look at somebody and just say you know that that person is isn't attractive if um, if they happen to be the same sex I mean it just mm -hmm. doesn't didn't make sense to me you mm -hmm. know what I mean and um, there when you, you get into an emotional connection with a person it can it can it, for me it can inspire that mm -hmm. so I do understand the inability to under to inability to understand somebody else's attractions because they're not they don't match yours. Right, they don't match yours. Yeah, because yeah. obviously there's lots of people who purport to be strictly gay or strictly straight and um, which is binary in its own way. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a bi it's a kind of a yeah, perfect point of view. Sort of you got to be gay or straight. And you're and you're and you're coming up and saying no. Hey, we're fluid. Sexuality well, it, is fluid. It is LGB. Yeah. 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 But the B isn't really. You know. I mean, I, I feel like I've I've been more discriminated against the, by gay men than um, than than, than uh, you know heterosexuals don't challenge me that much. But there there is. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, you know, I'm not like walking around going, hey, I'm by everybody. You know. In fact, this is very hard for me right now because mm -hmm. I usually talked about you this in private. And now we have the TV cameras and everything, and you know who knows. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I've decided to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, the the thing is, is that um, uh, I I just I. I, w I, w I found it difficult, you know, when I first started meeting other gay men, and, and, and I, I really wasn't exposed a lot mm -hmm. to gay men or bisexual men, definitely, mm -hmm. is that, um, uh, you know, they're questioning me now about, yo, you're not really gay, you're just, a, 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 you know, in transition from being married. Well, yeah, make up your mind type thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. make up your mind. I, I think I have made up my mind. I think my, my feelings have made up their, my heart's feeling made up. I mean, that, it, it, you can't change the way you feel. And I would, I would say to them, you know, you're, you're a gay man, and people are telling you to be straight most of your life. Why are you doing this to somebody else? You know, why, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. And I remember going to a party. It was, um, they had this uh, Down East Pride Association. I haven't gotten any notices from them. But it was like a professional network, a mixer once That's a month. That's how we met. That's, yeah, where we met. It was yeah. for LGBT. And um, I uh, st struck a, a, up a conversation with a woman there. And, we, you know, and, and she, she identified as being bisexual. And evidently, she was sharing some of the same frustration yeah. with lesbians that she had known that they challenged her about really mm -hmm. being bisexual. So it's like maybe it isn't just gay men. I don't think it is. I mean, I actually, because we did go together, and I was the only transgender person there that I, and. I didn't I, even know you were trans. I didn't I know, know you were transgender. But I remember saying so, and I had no niche to go into, because it was sort of, there was the gay men, and then there were lesbians, and then 
there were the few little bisexuals over here. There's maybe a couple. That's how I remember it. I don't see. I, so no, nobody has signs on them, so I can't tell. Well, they kind of did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, I was, kidding me, but I was the only know. trans person. But it was clear that I didn't have a fitting. I, I wouldn't anywhere. say you were only trans person because if I couldn't tell that you were trans. But I was telling people. I had my pronouns out. I was all out and about at the time. Yeah, but maybe somebody else wasn't. Okay, you know, maybe someone doesn't want to do it the way that you do it. You know okay. what I mean? It, it, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I really, for me, it, to me, it's most important because of what, where I've been, is not to write medically say, this is the situation here. Mm -hmm. I used to do that in high school. I used to do that in a lot of social situations only because I felt inadequate and so I wanted to, you know, identify and put people mm -hmm. off. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I do, I have a very um, strong um, aversion to, to, to like groups of people and what's going on here and what are the, what's, what's the atmosphere and you know going through all of this I, I, I kind of just like you know I just gotta be me you know and I'm just gonna give up I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let everybody else be who they are mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the biggest part of, of, of all of this is that you know um, as, 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 as devastating as the separation was you know Andrea and I have both gone through a really period of self-discovery and um, she says it, she, she, it really moves her when I say it, but that whole thing was the best thing that's ever happened to me. Losing everything mm -hmm. was the best thing that's ever happened to me because I really had to learn what was really important. I, mean, I thought being a good father or being a good husband, being, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, ha having a, a good job and doing it well and being involved in the community, we're all like, you know, this is who I am, this right, is who I am, right. these are my, my medals and all this sort of stuff. And then when it was all just taken away, well, most of it was taken away, I had to just be me, which was like nobody. And being nobody is great. You know, I mean, be, really getting down to your essential self, you, you know, and, and saying, you know, I don't, I don't know if I'm all the labels I think I am. And, and, you know, following all those passions that you were suppressing brings you around to the other side of it and saying, eh, it wasn't all that much, you know. But, but you know, we're not allowed to do that and, and we're not, and, and we don't allow each other to do that because we come up with these categories and these descriptions and then suddenly I have to figure out Oh, what, what am I, you know, and somebody's, I don't know, somebody called me pansexual or something like that. I, 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 to me, I don't know from one moment to the next how I feel. And, and even from day to day, you know, what might excite me changes. And right now I'm... I'm, I'm um, well, you just brought up an interesting mm -hmm. word, pansexual. Do you know what that, that is? I just so heard I it. I probably but, should. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I've heard of it, okay, but I just so my understanding of a pansexual person is that they do not care about uh, gender, gender identity, or expression. That, in a sense, they want to fall in love or be attracted to the person's energy. So when they're calling you pansexual, I think in a sense they're saying you don't care about gender. I do. Which I is actually, slightly different I, than yeah, being bisexual. Yeah, I actually am attracted to women who are feminine. I am attracted to men who are masculine. I guess that, that okay. would definitely So what about a trans man? Would you be interested in, unless they, it's incomplete surgeries? I, I, got know, a I, I got a masculine know. energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, but I, I'm missing a port and accoutrement. Yeah, well, you know, um, Okay, you're, 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 you're talking specifics here, and able, uh, but anyway. I think I, our I, audience wants specifics. Oh, really? I think so. Okay, well, um, for myself, and just speaking for myself, and this is one thing that amazed me about the gay community, is I'm very, not really all that interested in, in genitals. That's not something that I, I'm attracted to the body, and I don't know how important that is to say, but I'm attracted to uh, the... Could you be interested in a transgender man? I don't know. I don't really don't know. I, I've, I've never, I maybe because the way that I'm socialized, I'm, I'm, I see it one way or the other in terms of masculine and feminine. But I, that I don't. That kind of flies in the face of everything you've just said to this point. Why? Because you just talked about it being really fluid and then. Well, fluid for everybody. Okay. Like anybody could be could define for themselves what they're attracted to and not mm -hmm. attracted to. Specifically for me, I'm so not saying fluid. So you don't think fluid. you could be pansexual? No, I, 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 from the way you described it and what you just said, mm -hmm. no, no, I, I don't think that, I, I, I definitely don't think that I would be attracted to somebody regardless of the, the way that the, their personality, if they, they are, um, their sex, their gender, let's get gender, is amorphous to me. I might not, I might not be able to, to, find myself attracted. Mm -hmm. Now that's maybe because of the way that I'm socialized and I'm used to a culture where there, th those differences were for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's the way I kind of, I, I kind of, even still being bisexual, saw a dichotomy. I, and, and, and I would say that sex with a man is definitely different than sex with a woman 
in my experience, mm -hmm. but I'm not saying that that's true for everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that, that I hope that answers the... the not really. <laughs> I'm still spinning from it. You, you, um, no. Well, how about for yourself? The, do you find that you are, can be attracted to anybody regardless of how the, whether they come up masculine or feminine? No, I wish I could say that I could be pansexual. I wish I could sit here and say I could be attracted to anyone regardless of, of their expression, gender expression. But the truth is I tend to be attracted to women who are heterosexual and cisgendered. And then I'll be asked, of course, uh, could you be with a transgender woman? And I think I could be because of the energy. For me, it is about the energy. So I feel like I couldn't be with a man, not a trans man or, or, or man. Um, and that's a tougher one, um, depending on certain, certain things, I guess. And it seems very hypocritical of me to sit here and say that, but. No, it doesn't seem hypocritical <laughs> at all. I don't know why, I mean, you know, for me, there was a time where I could say, I wish I were attracted to blah, blah, blah. Or I wish I were just attracted to women, you know. Mm -hmm. That would have been, for a big part of my life, that would have been a real, you know, if I push a button, you know, that's, right. what, that's what would happen. So I can understand why you would say that in, in one sense. But from what I know and from what I found out about myself, it's better to move to where you feel best. <laughs> where you feel best, where you feel right. And it might change over time. But right. you can't go to where you really are until you go to where it feels right. You know, yeah, I, think you, I, I think that for... To me, pansexual is the right way to be, though. The person mm -hmm. is... To me, what they're saying is, in a sense, I, I could care less about this sort of extraneous trappings, which, with our, which is what our bodies are, to some degree. It's just superficial, to some degree. I mean, say you're in love with someone and they get in a car accident, they become paralyzed. I mean, do you still love them or no because their body's not operating properly? Um, you know, you're talking about love and attraction, and attraction instigate, can instigate love. But right, I think that, 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 I mean, I, I feel like oh, well, right now I'm going through a period, a pretty, pretty, for me, a significant period of celibacy, mostly because I've, I'm tired of sex without uh, some kind of connection. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and the uh, you know the, uh, the the connection is really makes makes uh, the the intimacy that much deeper, that much better. That in fact, um, you know, to 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 go from from what I felt was a really strong connection with Andrew for years uh, to 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 having a lot of different sexual experiences with people was was uh, in one sense exciting but very empty it just felt empty that's it, just masturbation it's it, it just it, well uh i don't think you were going to talk about that but anyway <laughs> if <laughs> but, you're just having but, but, sex, but yeah, you're right yeah, you're right I mean, you're right absolutely yeah. i mean they're, they're but but to a degree i i mean i really for some reason that that my ripe old age i had to learn that mm -hmm. because i i just i i did, it was a mystery to me but after all of that um, I just really felt like, um, yeah, this is this is really not getting me anywhere. Right. And and of course, I, I it's like I said, I felt like I was surrounded by love all my life. So I know a lot of that was a stupid, uh, you know, emotionally immature was way it to look for love. Was it self-medicating, so to speak, in a way? Yeah, just in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, emotionally, but but um, so there's so so there's that distinction. I mean, and and I think the only thing that you know to worry about is if. If you, uh, it, however you feel, whatever feels right for you, is a way that you should go. I, and I don't totally 100% advocate for that if, you know, like you're obviously going to hurt somebody. But, you know, it just seems to me that we're held back from, from um, expressing ourselves and then we do damage to ourselves and other people out of that. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really the really way we be, become disconnected and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of, um, you know, quote unquote, sins are committed. Because we don't, uh, we don't, we're not true to ourselves. We're not true to our, uh, you know, our, our, our real our inclinations. And and uh, sometimes our natural, real inclinations change, but they can't change unless you experience them, or it's harder for them to change. I suppose that's what that's what, that's what I think anyway. I mean, that's what that that's what's come about over this 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 period of time that I'm I'm, uh, you know, you know, I I I started working out more in the morning. I w started working out every day just to get myself happier, 
right. you know, and to get to a happier place. And, um, and so I wouldn't be so depressed as I had been. But um, when I went, even, you know, the meditation and all that sort of stuff, I, I, I still was not um, finding a place where I, uh, uh, you know, really could click in to, to, to me until I'd say even the past year. Mm -hmm. uh, th that I just feel like very content being alone sometimes and, and that might be because I'm, I'm well that's a good thing to you know to be comfortable with ourselves so come at being forward-thinking uh, Tom do you see yourself in a relationship in the future a connected one and if so with with what gender are you hoping for or does that ma not matter at this point that's a really good question. It's a hard question for me to answer because right now, uh, like I said, the person that I'm, you know, with the most um, is Andrea. Um, you know, uh, we we did go back to marriage counseling, and we're thinking of um, starting again, uh, but maybe for a different issue. Uh, but uh, you know, we we're we're going. You know, we've already planned our vacation for the summer. We go to on vacation together and. Uh, we see each other, you know, to, uh, this weekend I saw her three times, and um, I, I, I'm having a hard time with the uh, concept of being, I think, I think my, my socialization has been that someone else is the answer, and that's no longer part of my, my mindset. So uh, it, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, if, it seems, if it seems right to Andrew and I to live together again, and share our lives together again, we will. Mm -hmm. uh, if, it, if something else comes along for her and, or something comes along else for me, I think we try to be somewhat sympathetic about it, but it's hard to imagine. We've, we've had mostly a happy marriage, mm -hmm. and we've been through a lot together, and, we've, and I think we've learned a lot. She's the only person that I can spend time with and talk to her about how she affects me, and she talks to me about how I affect her without either one of us taking it personally. Mm -hmm. That's huge in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's, just, it's just huge. So I can't see having that kind of relationship with another person unless they've been through somewhat something similar and know how to own their own stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, a, and a lot of it's that. Um, I think th those are the more significant issues to me than who I wind up with because you don't wind up with anybody. My mother um, was married to my father for over 50 years and he died um, 12 years ago and she's 95, you know, she, so she's lived 12 years alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, there's no guarantee that, that somebody's going to be with you all the time. There's no guarantee that they, they might be, their interests might go somewhere else or take mm -hmm. them somewhere else, mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not it's somebody else. The, the, the whole idea that somebody is an answer to your life is, 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 is really um, sets, sets us up. I think, mm -hmm. and, and that's not to say that, I mean, I still believe that my monogamous relationship, you know, uh, was, I, I, I still believe that, that you can be happy in a monogamous relationship. I was for a significant mm -hmm. amount of time. Well, if you did connect back with Andrea and either remarried or just you were back, would you, uh, I don't know, would you feel like you, you know, you take something, it means you close the door to something else. Would you miss out on, the masculine energy that you've had with your other connections with male with other males. I don't know. I've been thinking about that. Um, I, my 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 relationships with other men have been spotted. Um, they haven't been as fulfilling. As yeah, I was going to ask: Were there any deeper connections besides just sort of how I referred to it as masturbation? I mean, did you have any real connections with any male? Well, yeah. I mean, I've had friend friend connections with men mm -hmm. that I've had sex with. But, um, but deep, roma intimate, romantic connections. Um, uh, to, a, to, a, to a very l limited degree, okay. but not, not near. I mean, when you live with some and you're, you're, you're with somebody for thir over 30 years, mm -hmm. and Andrea and I were married over 30 years, and when we, we shared, I mean, with three kids and two grandkids, you know, uh, so, much, so much stuff, you know, and it still goes on between the two of us. There's a lot of stuff that we're still dealing with and working with and all that sort of thing. Um, and she's talked about, you know, moving to Portland and maybe moving in with me. Um, and that would be a different life, you know, than what we had where we were before. But, um, but I, I, I don't, um, hmm, I, I, I know, I, I, you know, and I don't know, I, you know, I, it really may not be a function of the gender or that, that, 
sexuality, that part of my sexuality. It's just who I've met, what it's come to, what it's been like, you know, um, the, the, you know, and, and not having had that history too, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, it's I've dated other women, uh, and um, in this in this period of time, and it, it just doesn't doesn't seem like, um, yeah, that that I. I, I it, <laughs> I can't. I can't do that and not think of Andrea. It's just it's, mm -hmm. it's just hard. It's it's. it's so really you'd hard. be able to shut that door, so to speak. Then you'd I, still I, have attractions to. You know, I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't. See, I, I don't want to shut any doors. You know what I mean? I would not be with somebody and and feel like I'm shutting a door. That that would be the wrong per way to be with a person. It just would be wrong. I wouldn't want that person to feel they're shut in with me. You know what I mean? It, well, it, maybe that's the wrong word. But if you made a commitment to her to be again in a monogamous relationship, would your feelings of attraction toward men come back up, do you suppose? Oh, of course, of course. And then how uh, would you deal with that then? The same way I had always done before, but I'm, I guess I'm I'll go back to, well, you're saying if I w went back into a monogamous relationship with her, and that's, that, that remains to be seen. You know, I mean, that, that hasn't been formulated, that hasn't been discussed. I, I really believed in that. I wanted that for a long time. I believe it can work for people in different points of their lives or whatever, or for a lifetime. But um, I'm not necessarily, um, uh, you know, th I, I really want to shy away from the fact that somebody else can make me happy. It, it, it's a big burden to put on somebody to make you happy, you know what I mean? And I don't want to do that to anybody. When you, you know, um, I think one of the things that Thich Nhat Hanh has said th to say to somebody is, how, how does my loving you affect your freedom? Because you have these expectations. When you say you make a commitment, that's an expectation. But then, does that expectation tell you to belie who you are if you, if you change? We're dynamic, we change over time, and how are you going to share that? You're going to keep that to yourself? Are you going to hurt somebody? If you say, suddenly I felt this attraction toward this other woman, and I don't know what to do with it, Andrea, what is she going to do with that information? Well, it might hurt her, but if she weren't like so dependent on me be making her happy and just saw me being me as a person and me seeing her as a person and expecting and accepting each other the way we are, we talk about it at least. Mm -hmm. Talk about it and, and, and see what's going on. But, but I, I, you know, I, I don't really... Um, I don't see the value in, in setting up parameters in which to stay and then pretending to be in a certain way that, you know, uh, won't, will, will eventually t make your life a lie. It, this hour's flown by. It was an hour, yes, huh? I think it was an hour, <laughs> 50 minutes or something. <laughs> So um, I, I want to thank my viewers for watching and, and learning more about Tom as a, as a cisgendered bisexual male, Bob. although I don't know that we really addressed it as in the in a, um, I hope it was helpful to the audience, I guess. Thank you viewers for tuning in to Diversity Dignified, and I hope that um, you enjoyed my episode with Tom Hendel while we um, addressed multiple issues of commitment and cisgendered and bisexual and fluidity and all that sort of thing. Thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to see you again next month. Mm -hmm.